Well, welcome back. It's been not that long since we've seen you last. What have you been up to in the last couple of months? Uh, nothing. Training, uh, changing diapers, uh, not sleeping. Like, yeah, that's a thing. But no, just uh, training and baby stuff, that's about it. Nothing else has changed in life. Seems like you have a quick turnaround. Is that something you kind of wanted, or, or did you want a little bit more time to be at home with that baby? Uh, so honestly, I was not supposed to fight. Um, <laughs> we had had an agreement with coaches and like my strength coaches, everything else. Like, okay, if we're gonna stay at 85, we're gonna put on some weight. Like, I'm walking around at 200 pounds. Like, we're gonna get to 210. We're gonna like put on muscle, be 210, be a little bit bigger. Uh, you know, do some stuff, hang out with the baby. And then this happened. So I was like, okay, we're abandoning that plan. Now we have a new plan. And here we are. So what is it about this fight that enticed you to take it? Why break that plan for this fight? I deeply enjoy money. I will do awful, awful things for money. And when, so, you know, when you offer to pay me and then you... Um, you, get the, you offer to pay me, and I love to fight. I love to fight more than anything else. I've always told you guys before, I've said it once, I'll say it again. I'd rather fight than fuck, honestly. So, like, this is what I do. Like, I deeply respect Volkanovski for coming out and saying it. He's like, I love my family. I, when he, he's like, I love my family. I love all, you know, my kids, my wife. But when I don't have a fight scheduled, I'm lost and confused. And I'm like, guys, I, I love my girl. I love my kids. I, I love, you know, my, both my boys. But when I don't have a fight, I am very empty inside. And like there is a hole that fighting fills that no other human being is going to fill. And I'm off, I'm doing my things, I'm training, I'm living life, I'm happy, but I'm like, man, I'd rather be fighting right now. So when it came up, I'm like, screw it, why not? When the fight was approached, was it, were you told originally who the opponent was or was it like, hey, there's a fight on this date? main event or, or was it we want you to fight this guy so it kind of blurs because I'm pretty sure we were like talking about getting a fight scheduled later uh whatnot so they're going over opponents and then they're like oh somebody's like hey Brendan Allen is having an opponent for like the six and I was like I'll do it so I think I kind of raised my hand and the UFC's like all right deal cool um I just want to fight, man. It's, it's, a, it's Brendan's a dog. He's, uh, he's done really well since we fought last time. Like, Brendan's, you know, he's, what, 27? My God, I wish I was 27. Like, at 27 years old, man, I can't imagine the things he's going to accomplish in this sport. He's got 10 more years left in him at the earliest. So he's going to accomplish big things, man. It's, it's going to be crazy. But this is a chance for me I'm, I'm i'll be 37 this year i don't have time to uh do it the slow way i'm not gonna have a 10-year career in the ufc so anytime i get those opportunities to see a number above mine and take it i gotta take it and like this is one of those times you say that you um wish you were 27 i wish i was 37 so oh, shit. yeah it, it, get, it never gets you know never goes away um <laughs> How has he changed since your last fight? Or do you think that he has? Do you feel like this fight's going to go the same way it did the last time? Or do you see it going differently this time? Um, here's, here's a weird thing about this. And, like, people take this, will immediately see this as, like, insulting, but it's not insulting. <clears throat> I don't think Brandon really changed much at all since we fought last. And I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think he needed to. Like, people are weird. Like, people understand that we're two very large, skilled men fist fighting. Things happen. Like, that, that's the point of fighting, guys. Like, you can do everything right and still lose. Like, I don't think he really had too much he had to adjust from the time we fought last time. I got there. I landed first. Like, hell, look at the, look at the punch that wobbled him. We were trading punches. I got there first. Like, so, you know, unless you're like, oh, you're, you got to be faster. But like, no, it's, you never, it's, you're in a fight. Like these things happen. That's the point of fighting. So I don't really think he's had to like, you know, everybody improves with time. The more you do something, but I don't think he really had to make any giant adjustments. He was good then. He's good now. Like I got there first. It's a fist fight. These things happen. For a while there, you briefly deleted some social media. I think some of it's still deleted. Can you talk to me about the decision and, and maybe how your life changed during that time? Yeah, um, I got rid of my Twitter and, uh, and my Instagram for a while. Twitter's still gone because Twitter's terrible. And like, all of you on Twitter are just god, you're god awful. 
But <laughs> yeah, Twitter's still gone. Twitter will never come back. Um, they came back briefly, actually, originally, because I wanted to help raise money for uh, my uh, girlfriend's, uh, her, one of her niece's friends got hit by a car at school. So I got online to help raise money for that. Like Everybody that donated to that, thank you guys. I love you guys so much. I promise you I didn't forget about you. I was going to give stuff away for you. I got everything in a bag yesterday. I'm very slow and unorganized. I'm working on it. But outside of that, um, I'm somebody, my biggest enemy is always going to be me. I have never given myself credit for doing anything I've done well. I am a ranked fighter in the UFC at a weight class above my natural weight, and I have never once stopped to give myself a pat in the back about it. Like, I don't give myself credit for my success, but the moment I fail, I am also my own biggest enemy, and I will make monuments to my failure to remind myself that I have failed. I am that guy. So it's just who I am. It's who I've always been. So in recognizing that, I have to understand that I don't need random people telling me things. Like, I don't, like, I, I just don't. Uh, you think it doesn't bother you, whatever, but like when you have like 30,000 people telling you like you did this wrong or you can't do this, shit gets tiring really fast. So for me, it's just better to not engage. Like, I know I have some, I had some great fans on Twitter who are awesome. I do miss you guys. Have some cool conversations with people. But overall, it's just not an atmosphere I enjoy. Even on Instagram, I backed away from it. Uh, it's, I'm very, my settings are very, very like set up so that I have like complete control over who can message me, who I can talk to. And I pay a kid I used to, I pay a kid I grew up with to uh, screen my inbox messages so that like I don't see the hate. And it's just, it's how it's better for me that way. My life is better that way. Like, you know, if I, People are like, you never respond to your inbox. Like, I have a guy screening it. I pay to screen it like um, once a month, and he does that for me, so I don't even check. Uh, I am better that way because I'm so negative and so hard on myself that I don't need outside negativity doing it. And, like, you know, you always get dumb shit. Like, there's a lot of people in this sport that who aren't fighters that I respect. Like, you got guys, like some of you guys in here like, are very knowledgeable about, you know, the sport. I respect that. Guys like uh, Luke Thomas is another guy who I've reached out to before and talked to. I respect his opinion. Um, but you also have random like jackasses online who, God, the, 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 the social media age has ruined people because now people can just say things and people are like, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Like, no, it doesn't. Shut up. But now there's two of you and it spreads. Uh, like today, like some guy, I was talking to some in a comment, some guy was like, hey, did you see like, Tracy Lucas or Luke Tracy said this about you. I'm like, who the fuck is Tracy Lucas? Or like Luke Tracy. I'm like, what? what? I'm like, no. Like, I had no idea this man existed. And like, I, don't, I still don't know who you are. I don't even know what your fucking name is. But he's like, oh, you made a video. I'm like, so what? I'm like, that, that's why I'm not involved. Because social media has allowed any, especially YouTube, has allowed any idiot to like make a video about you. And like once again, that's the old Bill Burr comic. Like this is how like Hitler came to power. Like one guy saying some weird shit. And there's one other guy like you know what? That makes a lot of sense. And now there's two of you, and it fucking spreads. So uh, I, I just I'm just not a part of it. I'm not a part of the ecosystem. I don't need it, and my life is a lot better because of it. And speaking of people who talk a little shit on Twitter, um, I'm wondering if you could tell us some Sean Strickland advice that you were given from Sean Strickland. Life advice. What's the best piece of life advice he's given? You? <laughs> Never take life advice from Sean Strickland. Is the best advice that I can give anyone. <laughs> like, don't don't take life advice, <laughs> bro. Don't take life advice from Sean Strickland. Like that is number one. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, man. Like the worst, the scariest thing ever was uh, Toronto, where the press conference and like some guys like Strickland, we love you. Tell us what to think. And I'm like, oh my God. So it begins. So best advice, don't take life advice from Sean Strickland. Got it. And uh, last question, can you explain your t-shirt? I can't see what it says. I can just. Oh, yeah. This is uh, mostly peaceful. Oh yeah, it's just, dude, like, you know, like, hey, it's, I vibe with this shirt. Honestly, I'm a mostly peaceful human being. Like, uh, you know, I've done some things, but nothing they could prove. Never been found guilty. So, like, it's America. It didn't count. Thank you. Uh, you were asking for a main event after your last fight. So how, how happy were you when this opportunity, like, landed, landed in your lap? Oh, I loved it. I, I was super excited. Uh, even if it wasn't Brandon, it was just cool to get a main event slot. Um, got a really good skill on fall, like, falling forward and I kind of fell forward into a good position. So I was happy. I was begging for a main events fight. 
I got offered a fight, a couple fights. They weren't main event fights. So I was really bummed about it. And then I got this one. I was like, ha-ha, universe looks out for me. Um, you haven't been submitted since 2011. Um, you have, uh, I, I believe on, like, on UFC stats, you have the best takedown defense in the, in the UFC. So I, I think a lot of people are like, how does Brendan Allen beat Chris, Chris Curtis, right? Like, you're a better... You're, you're a better striker than him, so is he just going to outpoint you for five rounds? Like, how, like, when you look at this matchup, like, is it just is it as easy as that? Uh, no. It's <clears throat> sorry, I've got a little. God, like, I never had allergies my entire life to moving to Vegas in like spring. This is miserable. Uh, but no, honestly, it's it's not that easy because Brent, Brendan is a very unique problem to solve because there's nowhere that he's bad. Like, Brendan's not a bad striker by any means. He's a, he's a pretty good striker. He's a decent wrestler, but not a bad wrestler, and he's a great grappler. There's not really too many areas to where he can't take care of himself. So people will be like, oh, well, he's going to outpoint you. Like, no. I, when someone is that well-rounded, the issue becomes you can't afford to make mistakes in any one area. Because, you know, they're not bad there. They can take advantage. So I, do I think I'm, I, I honestly believe I'm a much better wrestler than he is. That being said, he's good enough to where if I make a mistake, he can take an advantage. So it's not just like, oh, this stat's better. I don't have to worry. Like, no, his stats are high enough to he can take advantage of my mistakes. So the big thing for me becomes I've got to pitch. I've, I've got to cut down on the mistakes I make. And, uh. I think uh, the burial fight, I, I really did cut back on a lot of the things I had issue with before. We worked, uh, my, my camp has worked so much on just like, you know, me fighting at 85. Uh, honestly, being a middleweight now, as opposed to like a lifelong welterweight, has had a couple issues in style that we've had to adjust. I can't fight the way I fought at 170 at 85. It just doesn't translate well with uh, the size of the opponent. So we've had to learn some new things. And it's just a matter of implementing that because Brendan, can take advantage of my old mistakes, and I can't go back out there and show the same look. You mentioned you were uh, planning on putting put on weight for uh, middleweight. Where's this weight gonna go? Like you, you can't put any more size on your shoulders. So do I do so. Uh, do you know what? I don't honestly like my Brad Tavares makes fun of my arms every time he sees me. He's just like your arms get bigger and bigger every time you see me. But uh, you know the the PI has really been working on like letting me get bigger and stronger. So I, I don't know, man. Like I'm really grateful that like weight doesn't go to your head immediately because my head is like I, I couldn't have a bigger head. But I don't know. Yeah, it's like right. Like it's, it's it'd be rough. But uh, I don't know, man. Like I've. I've got uh, big arms, big shoulders, big ass, small waist. So I was, I'm, I'm like blessed. But uh, you know, it, it, we'll, we'll see. Like you know, if I can get like, a little bit bigger junk, I'd be happy. But uh, outside of that, like it is what it is. Uh, what happened between uh, Roman and Eva Bob that, that you were gonna jump over the cage and fight Nazardine? God damn, he's just the dirtiest motherfucker who's ever fought, like I've seen fight. Like, I, guys, I've been fighting for. I've got 41 fights, and like. I don't think I've ever been called for an eye poke. I don't think I've headbutted anybody. I haven't, you know, everybody's accidental nut kick, whatever. I've never kicked a down opponent. How do you do this shit back to back, like every fight? Like, my God. Like, you're either dirty or stupid. All right? So, like, it's just one of those, you're either dirty or dumb. Like, I don't know which one you pick. But Jesus, I can go most of my career without fucking gouging people's eyes, headbutts, and all of that. But he does this shit every single fight. So, like, you know, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, last year for me, uh, it was announced today you're going to be in the UFC video game in June. <laughs> Finally! <laughs> Are you happy about that? Dude, I refuse to play the UFC video game until they put me in. And that, that was my stipulation. People were like, oh, will you play with me? I'm like, no, I won't touch this game until I'm in it. So that's exciting. Thank you, EA. Thank you. And then finally, uh, are you don't fuck my stats up, please. Like, <laughs> as I say this, like, please don't give me shitty stats. Like, I, oh god, guys, do not do that. I swear to God, please don't do that. Um, are you excited for the new Mad Max movie that's coming out soon? Dude, Furiosa, I'm very excited about. Like, I was a, uh, I was a big, big fan of Fury Road. So, like, Furiosa is going to be interesting. Uh, I really want to see where they go with it, but I am super excited about it. I almost wore my Witness Me shirt today, but I thought OJ would be better. But, yeah, I'm very excited. I'm a huge Mad Max fan, so uh, well, keep your fingers crossed. Please don't take this from me. Which would you rather that EA gets right, the looks, the body, 
or your stats. I mean, what if he gave you great stats, but you look absolutely like not I don't, I don't care what I look like. Give me good stats. Like, oh, my God. Nothing's worse than <laughs> I remember I was living with Sam Alvey when he first got the game. His feelings were so hurt because they gave him such bad stats. <laughs> I remember on the couch and he's just like, he was so fucking hurt. And I was like, I never want to do that. Like, Sam's feelings were fucking hurt, guys. So, yeah, like, don't put me through that, please. Or, yeah, like, I don't got to be the best, but, like, give me, like, upper middle tier, please. Like, I'm begging you. And last one, uh, this is your second son? Yeah, yeah, Barrett, yep. So, you, you, I know that in fighting you get a lot of experience that carries over to your next fight. So, you know, you have a son. I think your first one's, like, maybe 15 or 15. 15, be going 16 this so, year, yeah. you know, are you going to take experience from that in this one right now? Or are you, are you already feeling more like a seasoned vet as a – Oh, dude, hell no. Like, something – everybody – everybody like, my mother always said, like, little Chris was, like uh, – she's, like, he's a, kind of a cheat. Cause he's, he's such a great kid. He was easy. He's easy for me. Barrett is an emotional terrorist. To where, like, I don't, like, little Chris was fine. He wants to play. Like, if nothing, he didn't want anything. He just kind of sit and, like, you know, play with himself. Barrett is an emotional terrorist. Like, he has to be held. He demands, like, you can't be in the room with him and not acknowledge him for too long because he's like, what the hell's going on, guys? Like, and I think it's our fault because such a, he's such a cute baby when he was born. Everybody's been, like, like, Googling over him. Like, oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. And now he expects that at all times. And, like, that was a mistake. And that kid is an, I love him to death. But he is an emotional terrorist. And, like, all the things I've learned from my first son, Little Chris, do not apply to Barrett because he is just a whole different monster. Is he going to be a, a gym baby? Is he going to, once he gets oh. up, is he going to start spending the time at the gym with you? He, come, he comes to sparring. He comes to training already. Uh, you know, it's funny because, like, we've, I don't know what was in the air around, like, last year. But, like, everyone has, like, a five- or six-month-old baby at the gym. There's, like, six of them now. Like, so, it was, like, me, like, Moe Sadebu, Jeremy Kennedy. We've all got, like, kids just, like, laying around. So, there's, like, a bunch of strollers at the gym watching their dads fight. Like, yeah. So, it's just funny, man. We've got a – we're going to have a crazy stable here in a few years. That's awesome. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you.